on the wall. All right, so I thought I'd just run you through. I get a lot of questions. If you're new here, this is what I do. I live in my car, basically, and everything I own is in my car. So uh, it's got to have one, no, nothing's got one purpose. Everything has two or more purposes, and that especially goes for my rods and reels. So I thought I'd just run you through. So there's a lot of questions about what do you do here, what do you do there, and, and the reality is I don't have 16 different setups that I can run that are, you know, for this, 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 and this. You know, I've got, um, what have I got? Six rods, real combos, and um, that's what gets me through. So I'm gonna take you through those, um, and that's what I'll be carrying in here for the next whatever, um, until something else pops up. And there is there is another rod or two that I would like, but I don't have a whole lot of space. So Speaking of space, this is my first one. We'll start at the lightest and we'll work our way out. And this is my first one, which is a, um, a Raider travel inshore rod, which is like a seven foot rod that goes into three pieces. So I keep this actually behind my seat. Um, so it's actually good for, um, it's good for brims. Um, it's good for, you know, your smaller sort of flathead stuff. Uh, it's good for, what have I caught on this, jungle perch, sooty grunter, all that sort of stuff. It's sort of that two to four kilo stick, you know, it can throw out. Um, Little, little chubby crankbaits, you can throw out little top waters and little plastics and all sorts of things. It's a bit of a jack of all trades and um, it's been in the wars. So um, it's, it's got a place behind the seat because you know, you never know. You might see something, a little creek or something you drive over and you just want to jump out, put this together. Um, you can see last time, last time I got a massive mother of all, uh, of all wind knots and I've had enough so I just chucked it in the ute. So I'll just pair it up with a little Stratic uh, 1000 because you're not you're not chasing anything big you, you, you're keeping it pretty sporting and I think that's six or eight pound Kariki braid on there can't quite remember but it's either six or eight um, pretty good setup it's it's pretty entry level so it's not going to cost you a whole heap these are quite expensive the Stratix they've, the Stratix CI4 pluses they've been replaced with the Bamfords now so I should probably um, I was going to service this and sell it, that's why I'm waiting on those bearings. Um, and then I'm going to, going to move this reel on, probably put a Vanford 2500 on there, it's a little bit more versatile. Um, so, anyways, that's, that's that one there, the, uh, the old behind the seat special. Alright, so this rod here, this rod and reel setup here is probably what you'll see me using a lot of the time for my creek stuff. It, it has got a lot of use. Um, this Zodius, this is the six to 12 pound Zodius. Seven, no, it's not seven foot, it's six. I better get this right. No, it is seven foot. It is a seven foot one. I thought it was a 610 for some reason, but yeah, seven foot, six to 12 pound. Um, so you're throwing, I'm throwing, well, I'm throwing top water frogs, but you can throw anything up to that three quarter ounce sort of weight. So you can chase barras and stuff in that a little bit of deeper water or juice or big flatties or whatever so see I just got a weightless hook on there um, yeah just paired with that Vanford 4000 Vanford which has been very good basically the Vanford is is the replacement for the CI 4 plus which I used to run a lot of and uh, my last one died and Shimano actually sent me this one um, big shout out to Dane he said, uh, hey mate, I watched your vid and that CI4 Plus sounds like it's had it. Can we send you a new Vanford? So that's how the Vanford came along, which is uh, very grateful for um, for them to send me that. But um, yeah, just spool that up in my circumstance. I find that this 15 pound, uh, this is the Super Slick, Super Slick 8. It's an 8 carrier um, power pro. So it's actually quite good for what I'm doing, skipping frogs throwing paddle tails and, and little prawn imitations, all that sort of stuff. So um, very light, very, very light setup, obviously, because it's the, whatever they call this, is a fancy name for this, the monocoque. Um, so very sensitive and very, very light. This reel is extremely light compared to, say, a Stratic, which is a little bit more robust, um, which I'll show you in a minute, the, the, the regular Stratic. So um, probably not up for that heavier even though it's got like 11 kilos of drag it's probably not up for that real he those, those real big fish like the I think I did catch a uh, 70 80 centimeter snapper on this and man it was it was a fight of its life of my life um, 
on this sort of setup. So you probably want to go a little bit heavier um, just to, you know, take the take the pressure off yourself to land those fish. So yeah, that's basically that rod in a nutshell. All right, so this is a Stratic 4000 paired with a Dial Luna 8 to 20 pound, which when I first looked at it, I was like 8 to 20 pounds, a big sort of range for whatever but um it's very light in the tip but it's got quite a good bit of backbone here it's a two piece as well joints just here um so yeah not not a bad rod I, I think a lot of guys are using them to chase flatties flick for flatties and stuff in estuaries but you can see there i've got a um it's a five inch seaman paddle tail on now just rolling it over the tops of snags and and catching jacks and um barrels and stuff like that so that's basically what that's for i'm running on the on the Stratic, it's got yeah 11, same as the Bamford's, got 11 kilos of drag. But this this is a lot more robust. This uh, this reel. So if you're chasing your bigger snapper and and things like that, then that's kind of what you what you want. Barras and things like that, where you can put a lot of pressure on. You can crank that drag up and put a lot of pressure on them, and you feel like this thing is just indestructible. So that's that's sort of the difference why you would go a Bamford over over this. If you Flick and light tackle all day and you want something nice and light. Um, yeah, that, but this is this is a little bit heavier um, to be throwing around all day, but still still gets the job done. I've just got 20 pound um, braid on that. Uh, again, super slick, 20 pound. Uh, cast really well. So, Bob's your uncle there. All right, so into the bait casting setups. This is my bait casting setup. It's just a Corrado, just the regular old Corrado K and a salty which is a relatively new thing to to come out the um salty 10 to 10 to 20 pound six foot four and so yeah basically this is just like a little this is basically a barra stick or a jack stick you know if you're chasing jacks around pontoons or whatever this will sort of get it done corrado's got a very good name um, for that uh, now look i haven't put a lot of time in with this uh, i do like my spin gear uh, this is the only bait caster gear that i've, that I've got and I'm sort of just waiting for, for barra season to to um, kick back in and then I can actually throw this thing around because to be honest I haven't really given it much time of day um, other than throwing uh, you know sort of big plastics into big holes and and seeing if I can get you know finger marks or whatever to bite which I haven't quite finger mark haven't quite worked out yet but um, I've got a nice one on a vibe on this uh, I got a thready on this and it you know it does the trick it's no dramas at all so I've just got that spooled up with a 40 40 pound 50 pound super slick again a big fan of the super slick you know it's traditionally that um, power pro has a has a has a bit of a name for being really ropey and some guys like it being ropey especially those empowerment barra dudes where you know you're gonna get wrapped around timber or whatever they don't mind it being ropey but I'm not a big fan of the, the ropey sort of things as you get up to those 50 pound plus sort of line. So this is this is 50 pound, it's very, very thin, you know, so I'm um, very, very happy with it. And uh, the reel, very happy with it. It's very smooth still. Like I said, haven't really put the time in with it yet, but I will. Um, nice cork grips there. I'm a sucker for cork grips. Uh, very, very, very good. Alrighty, next up is this, um, this is a P3 setup that I've just recently got for, you can see they've got a little stick bait, you know, you can throw it tuna and you can throw it on the reef flats or whatever you want, um, or you can throw plastic signs, P3, so um, just paired up there with a Saragossa uh, 6K with, I think, that's that, um, seven, is it 70 pound or... I uh, forget, but yeah, OSHA, OSHA braid on that one. Probably needs replacing by now, but uh, been through the ringer. But uh, yeah, so I got this one for, yeah, just throwing like a tuna, just throwing those middle sort of baits, like those those smaller stick baits, those 100 mil stick baits. Um, the sort of plastics, you know, five, seven inch plastics, that a little bit heavier, um, you know, offshore, you know, that inshore sort of stuff, but still, you know, out in the blue water. Um, doing stuff like that, chasing, chasing queenies and just everything in the middle there, you know what I mean? Like, I might chase a few goldens on it. Like I said, I haven't put a lot of time in with this rod yet, but 
it's relatively new, but um, yeah, I must have caught 50 undersized um, red throat and and uh, emperors and grassies and, and trouties the other day at the reef on that on that stick bait there. It's pretty you know rough stuff or whatever, but they're all sort of smallish, so you won't see anything from that session. I, I kid you not, 50. So yeah, anyways, that's that. Um, Saragossa impressions on the Saragossa, not bad, you know. It doesn't have as much drag as say like a Stella or a Twin Power 80k would. I think it's only got 10 to 10 or 11 kilos of drag with those other, like the 8k Stella I'll show you in a minute. When you step up to that, you've got like 24 kilos of drag. So, But it, you know, it gets the job done. Um, you're really just stepping up from say that 4k Stratic to this, it's just more line um, on the spool basically it's just more line capacity and you know that's that's basically yeah, the drags the same but that's the reason why you'd go up to this it's just cranking and line that's that's basically the nuts and bolts there so um, yeah looking forward to putting in more time with that all right so this is my big stick it's a p5 type c grappler Basically P5, sort of middle of the range, not heavy, heavy, considering they go up to, you know, P8 to 10s and whatever. So, yeah, it's a good all, good all rounder. I, I do a bit of popping with this, I do a bit of stick baiting with this, and big plastic works or whatever. I've even jigged with this before I got a jigging rod because, you know, uh, you got to do what you got to do when you can't have all the bells and whistles. So, yeah, that's it there. It's, um, been through the paces. That's it there with the 8k Stellar on there. I think that was about 1200 and the rod was 499. So, you know, this setup here is sort of running your 16, 1700 dollars. So, plus a line, just running, um, what am I running on there? 50 pound Power Pro actually. So, which has blown up on me once. That's the only time I hooked it. Quite a large GT. And He's still on it. There he is. There he is. Good job. Yeah, man. He's big. Yeah, he's fucking big. Oh my god, he's big. That's power snap. <laughs> this is going to struggle, especially in that tight sort of structure. So, yeah, that's basically it there. Um, just got to make sure you tighten these way down. Um, it's done a, done a lot of. It's caught a lot of good fish, actually. It's caught a lot of decent fish. I, I really struggle with it to, to fish with this um, to begin with because uh, it, it's quite big, it's different. You go from flicking in the creeks or just brim fishing or whatever, and even now, I do a lot of frogging and inshore stuff, and then to, to go to something like this the very next day and try and swing a popper around, you know, you need, you need to put your time in with it. So uh, it can be a little bit daunting, and then obviously you go up again. I've seen what some of the what the boys are using, like those 20Ks and whatever, and, and you know, PE10 stuff, it's, it's pretty big stuff, so you got to give yourself time to get used to it. So the only other thing I've had done with this is uh, I've had all the guides ripped off and I've had which guide got replaced. I think this guide got replaced because um, someone who will remain nameless, um, yeah, dropped a thing on it, dropped a bit of water thing on it. So that had to get replaced, um, bound all these back up again. I didn't do it, but they got bound up again. So that was about the only thing. But you know, it's been through, been through the paces. And I think one of these ones here, I, I got a big wing knot or wrap on it, and it sort of like pulled it out just a tad. You know, so that that got redone and whatever. So, but yeah, that's basically that one. So yeah, that's basically all my rods and reels. I actually got one more rod in there, which I show because it's broken anyway, so it needs replacing and get something different anyway. But that's basically where all my rods are stored, um, just in a rack up in there, and one behind the seat. So that's it. Um, links are all in the description. You can do your own research. If not, drop me a comment or send me a message on the gram or whatever. So uh, hopefully that helped you out. So we'll see you in the next one.